This is part two now of video problem number five. And the problem that we were considering was there was a container with 20 transistors. Five of them were defective and 15 of them were non-defective. So one-fourth of the uh, transistors are defective. And we were selecting three of them at random. And the problem was what is the probability that at least one of those three selected transistors is defective. And what we solved in the previous video is, well, if we select three transistors, what would be the probability that none of them are defective? And that was this number right here. And then we noted that when this number is subtracted from one, that is equal to which has turned out to be 137 over 28, that is equal to the probability where one of the three selected transistors is defective, plus the probability where two of the selected transistors are defective, plus the probability where three of the selected transistors are defective. And collectively, these added together which is what this is, that thing could represent the probability that at least one of the selected transistors is defective. Now what we're going to do in this video is, as in the past video, the previous video where we calculated this probability, now we're going to calculate the probability of having one selected transistor being defective. Then we'll calculate the probability of two of the such a transistors being de selected are defective, or three of them, all three of them being defective. And then we'll add them up and see if we get the same number. So here we have again 20 transistors Five of the transistors are defective. Fifteen of the transistors are not defective, non-defective transistors. Now we want to say, well, what would then, if we select three of them, what is the probability that all three of the selected transistors are defective? So that would be equal to the number of ways that we could select three defective transistors divided by the total number of ways that we could select three transistors. And again, um, as we just did in the previous video, if there's 20 transistors total, the number of ways that we can select three of them the order in which we select them doesn't matter at all, so it's a combination problem. So that is this expression, which we have used in our previous videos uh, solving combination problems. Now what is, so this is the total number of ways that we can select three transistors from our group. What is the total number of ways that we can select three defective ones? Well. In our box, there's five defective transistors there. So what we're asking ourselves is, what is the number of ways that we can select three out of those five when the order doesn't matter? And again, of course, that is now we selected three transistors total, all of them being defective, which means out of the non-defective bunch there, out of the 15 non-defective ones, we selected zero of them. We're writing this now as binomial coefficients. This would be the binomial coefficient phi 3, and this would be the binomial coefficient 15, 0, divided by the binomial coefficient 20 over 3, 
And of course, this is just one. This is 15 factorial divided by 0 factorial times 15 factorial. So we can just take that out. And then if you go ahead and do the computations like we did in the previous video, this comes out to be equal to 2 over 228. So if we have our box of 20 transistors where one-fourth of them are defective, we randomly take out three of them. The probability that all three of those are defective is 2 out of 228. What about now the probability where two of the selected three transistors is defective? So now here, again, that would be the number of ways that we can select two defective transistors and one non-defective transistor divided by the total number of ways that we can select three transistors. Here we're selecting two defective ones and one non-defective one, so it's a total of three that we're selecting. So here we have how many ways can we do this? Well, there's five non-defective ones. So out of the five, we're selecting two of them. The order in which we select them doesn't matter. So it's just that expression times there has to be, if we're selecting two defective ones and we're taking three out altogether, that means that one of them is non-defective, which we get from the 15 non-defective transistors in the drawer. So how many ways can we select one non-defective one out of the 15? That's this combination, or that binomial expression. So multiplying these two together, remember this is event one, selecting two defective transistors. This is event two, selecting one non-defective transistor. We multiply the two events together by the counting principle to get the total number of ways that we can select two non-defective trans two defective transistors and one non-defective transistor. Now what we need to know for the denominator is what is the total number of ways that we can select twenty or three three transistors out of our group. And of course that's just this. And again, if you go ahead and do the uh, permutation, do those computations there like we did in the previous video, this comes out to equal 30 out of 228. Now, so we have selected three transistors. All three of them were defective. Two of them were defective. What would be the probability where just one of the transistors is defective. So now that means out of the, when we have five defective transistors and 15 non-defective transistors, we're selecting three of them all together, all told. One of them is defective. So that would mean that how many ways can we select it? Well, there's five defective ones. We're selecting one of that five. The order doesn't matter. So the number of ways that we can do that is one. But we're taking three out all together. So if only one of them is defective, the other two are not defective. How many ways can we do that? Well, there's 15 non-defective transistors there. We're selecting two of them where the order doesn't matter. So these two numbers multiplied together tell us the total number of ways that we can select one defective transistor when we're randomly taking three of them out. Here, if we're selecting one defective transistor, the other two are not defective. So you can think, event one is selecting 
a defective transistor. And here's a number of ways we can do that. The other two transistors are not defective. This is the number of ways we can do that. Now by the counting principle, we multiply these together and that tells us then the total number of ways that we can select three transistors, one is defective, the other two are not defective. And then this divided by the total number of ways that we can choose three transistors out of the group is this, and then like we did in the previous video, go ahead and figure out these binomial coefficients, and this comes out to be 105 over 228. So here we have then the probability when we select three transistors that one of them is defective, that two of them is defective, and that all three of them are defective. So we have 105 plus 30 is 135 plus 2. Add these together and you have 137 over 228. Just as we figured out in the previous video, only we did it a much shorter way actually because there we noted that here, this was the number of ways of choosing no defective transistors when you take three of them out. And in the, we explained in the last video how one subtract that is equal to the sum of all of these. And this is 91 over 228, which means these have to sum up to be 137 over 228. And collectively, that would be the probability of selecting at least one defective transistor. So hope that makes sense and again uh, we chose this problem because it's kind of an elegant demonstration of how we can use combinations to solve um, uh, different types of probability problems. Now in the next video in uh, problem example number six we're going to consider just a slight variation of this problem and then in video example number eight, we're going to come back to this very same problem and we're going to rework it only that in that that video there, we're going to work it using the principles of conditional probability. So come back and join us for those videos and we'll see if we can solve some more problems.